Well hi folks, I'm just going to give you a quick sort of roundup of the, my favourite vegetables, which I prefer to grow and you know which varieties. So I'm going to try and do it from A to Z from memory and I'm going to try, well obviously I don't grow certain things, I don't, so I'm going to go from A to Z, I don't grow aubergines, I don't grow asparagus, I'm just going to tell you the sort of things that I grow and my favourite varieties and why they are. So we'll start off, A, nothing in the A's, B's. French beans. My favourite ones are Cobra, which are a tall, tall growing climbing bean. I've never had as many beans in my life off them. They, they produce, you know, good old beans, six to nine inches long, and even if you let them go quite beany, they're still quite tender. They're a really good variety. They might be a bit more difficult to grow outside, but uh, I grow them in the polyton, but if, you know, if you have a decent summer, they, they tend to do well. Then there's your dwarf beans. My favourite ones of those was one called Safari. I think they're called safari because they're like the Kenyan beans you get in the shops, little tiny string beans, and they were good. I don't grow broad beans and I don't grow runner beans, so I can't give you any views on those, I'm afraid. Beetroot. I've not grown any beetroot this year, but when I do grow it, I just grow the basic stuff, which is bolt hardy or bolt hardy, I think it's called. So there is one called, um, what's it called? Pablo, I think, which is a good show variety, but it's also a nice, a nice eating variety too. Bee, beetroot, bro, broccoli, broccoli. The only broccoli I grow, well, I grew some summer sprouting broccoli, this new type this year, which was absolutely woeful. It produced very little, and it went to seed so quickly in summer. It's a new one because mainly the most broccoli is grown over winter for an early crop in early spring, sort of March onwards. So that's what I grow. I plant that in. July and it grows slowly until about October it's about two foot six now and that will just stand over winter and start flowering producing spears in sort of March time hopefully I can't remember the variety of that off offhand but uh, that's the early sprouting broccoli Calabrese there's that many different varieties I grew one once called Achilles or Aquiles which was quite a dwarf variety it only got to about 18 inches tall but it produced a really nice head. So you've got, you know, if you're short of space, then I would try one called Aquiles. I think that's it for bees. C's cabbages. Where do we start? I just grow the basic ones. For early summer ones, I grow ones called Greyhound. There is a, a, a more vigorous one called Hispy, which is an F1 hybrid, but cost about four times as much for the seeds and I've never found, I've grown both and I've never found any difference I find that greyhounds just as good and that's like 99p for a thousand seeds so uh, they're the only summer cabbages I grow, they're the pointed ones and then we've got the Savoy cabbage this year I, I, the first time I've grown one I think one of the main ones is called Arctic King uh, but that can be quite late, this one I grew this year it was a it was called a mini one, but I was getting decent edge, you know, sort of that size, quite early into August, so you don't have to wait until the winter time, and they will stand well. So I'll go for the mini one, personally, that's what I'll be growing more of next year. Carrots, I only grow one carrot to eat, and that's Sweet Candle. It's the one I grow for sure, but it's also the best and the sweetest carrot out there, as far as I'm concerned, because they just, they grow really big, they're always tender, they're bright orange, and they're sweet as anything, and they do stand well over winter as well without splitting I've found so there's only one variety for me and that's sweet candle chilies I'm not a massive chili eater I do like to grow them for sure this is one I've grown this year which is a cracking just a little compact plant that's called basket of fire they're dead easy to grow you can grow them on a windowsill because they're so compact these are about 80,000 heat units so they are getting they're getting quite hot but a nice little plant and also one I've been growing for years is one called Prairie Fire. These aren't quite as hot, these are about 50,000 but they've still got a bit of kick to them. So I'm there, they're about my limit and the same thing you can just grow those on a windowsill. That's all. I've grown some in the greenhouse and this one was actually grown in the windowsill so it's not that difficult. And with these Prairie Fire you can actually take your own seeds out of the seed heads, out of the chilies. Because they're not a hybrid they come true from seed and you can just use those. Excuse me, so you don't need to uh, buy any more seeds. And if you want one that's a little bit more on the milder side, I would suggest growing this one. Not only is it quite mild, it's 20,000, but the size of the 
chilies are absolutely phenomenal. Called Joe's Long. These are about 20,000 on the Scoville heat unit. You can see it grows quite big, maybe two feet tall. So it's not a monster, but they're quite palatable. And they grow to that. I've grown grew that from seed in March this year, and it's got that big, and the chilies are all right. So, uh, like I say, I'm going to grow some habaneros, not habaneros, the ones you get on your on your chill on your pizzas, jalapenos, I think they call them. Yeah, because they are mild. So I'm going to grow some of those. Right, courgettes. There's only one I grow, and that's called Defender. It does well in all weathers. It's a really prolif prolific cropper quite virus free, that's another F1 hybrid and I only grow one plant and honestly I get absolutely sick to death of courgettes because it produces maybe 50 or 60 on a plant so it's just defender for me all the way cucumbers, I'm not the world's best cucumber grower as you've seen this year, I didn't get many to set I just grow the smaller ones the little outdoor ones but I grow them with a called Burpless Tasty Green or Market More the little ugly spiny ones but you get a lot of them there's that many different types these days all female what you want to really get is an all female variety if you're going to grow a long one so you don't need to mess about removing all the male flowers because they're the ones that turn bitter they're quite old fashioned but you still get some of those and you can get a shot when you eat a cucumber and it tastes hot tastes awful c d e f garlic the only garlic i grow it's been my own bulbs for the last five or six years really and it all originated from one called Solent White. So I just keep the best bulbs. Obviously, it stores until I plant. I only plant them out in March time, so it stores from harvesting in September, way past March. So it's a good storer, and it's called Solent White. And I'm just use the same bulbs year after year, and it gets more and more used to my conditions, and it seems to get better every year. So that's what you can do. No need to go and buy any garlic bulbs. And once you get a decent crop, just keep the best bulbs for next year and replant those. And also what I do, I know it's not what a lot of people do, but I just plant them in in springtime, early spring, sort of early to mid-March, because then they're not sat all over winter in my wet soil, getting rust and stuff like that. So that's why I didn't get any rust this year, I think. Garlic kale. I've grown a different one this year. It was a more of a crinkly one, rather than the, the leafy one, which I grew was, that was called Nero de, to, Nero de Toscana. That was a very dark leaved one. That was really, really strong iron flavour. Maybe not to everyone's taste, but uh, if you like that kind of thing, it's good. And they do grow all winter. They're the hardiest plants, and they don't seem to get attacked as much as cabbages do by ca uh, by cabbage white butterflies and caterpillars and stuff. So uh, they're a good crop to just keep picking stuff over winter. Leek. Leeks, I've tried millions in the past, but I've just gone back to Musselburgh again, the bog standard, the old variety, tested, and it's just, they stand well over winter, they're cold tolerant. They're not the biggest, they're not the smallest, but they are tasty, and they're just, they're just dead reliable, really. Lettuce, I'll always grow little gem lettuce, the little sweetheart sort of cost lettuces, because I just find them brilliant. They are quick to grow. This year I've got one called Multigreen 3, which is like a loose-headed leaf, a loose-headed one, but you cut it as a whole lettuce and it's really crispy, really crunchy, and if you chop the bottom off, all the leaves just fall out and it's just fantastic. And this, they're quite virus resistant, and I haven't found any green fly or anything on it either, so that's a good variety. And then also I always grow a, an iceberg type. And there's that many. I've, there's one called Windermere, I think, but I just grow Webs. Webs wonderful, because that's always been um, been okay for me. Onions. Uh, I've put some winter, overwintering ones in, and that's they're the Japanese ones. One called Shenshu Yellow, which are the white onions. Well, not white, but the normal, the normal coloured ones, and some radar, which are the red ones. They did really well. Like, Last year, this year, because we had such a mild winter, but the thing is, if they do die over winter, because we get a really harsh winter, then you can just plant your your spring planted ones anyway. And if I was going to plant those, I would use set on or stew on, and for the red ones, oh, what are they called? Red, not red, uh, red baron. That's it. But I'd also encourage you to get pay about an extra pound to get heat treated onion sets, because they they kept in a temperature which actually kills the, the, the any flower head that's in the set 
so they've got a far less tendency to go to seed which is really good for the red ones so if you can get heat treated ones I would definitely uh, pay an extra quid and get those really parsnips I don't really grow a lot of parsnips to eat I just grow them for show and then I've, I've grown some outside and the variety I use is pinnacle because they taste alright they're a good shower and they, they taste okay as well to eat peas I'll only grow one pea again which is called Hearst Green Shaft I just find them fantastic really heavy cropper you can start them off early they've got about 10 or 11 peas in they grow to about Maybe three foot, maybe three feet tall, and you just get an amazing crop, a fantastic crop. So I would just say Hurst Green Shaft any day for peas. Sweet peppers. I bought some plants this year because I forgot to sow some. They were called Poseidon. They they produce a lot of smallish ones which have gone right. But if I was going to grow them from seed, I'd just grow the ones called uh, Californian Wonder. There, the sort of bog standard one. Squashes. This year I've grown ones called Festival, which are a winter squash. I should have brought you some of those up to show you. They're really nice colours. They weren't as prolific as I'd have thought. They had loads and loads set in, got to about that size, and then just rotted on the bottom. That was in the polytunnel. So I only got about eight. They'd be about two pound each off two plants, but uh, I think I'll try them outside because they don't think they like the heat as much, actually. Turnips. There's only one I've grown, that's called Armand. It's dead cheap variety, that's the purple topped one. Even when they get you know, even when they get quite big like that, they're still tender and they're not stringy. Where else are we going now? Um uh, what have we missed? Potatoes have missed potatoes, haven't we? Now I have grown Rocket for first early, it's Rocket and Swift, but to be honest, I wouldn't bother. They're about two weeks earlier than things like Charlotte and Nicola, the French salad potatoes. But the yield is pathetic and the taste is awful. They're just a waste of time as far as I'm concerned, so I won't be growing those again. I'll grow Nicola and Charlotte, little waxy yellow tubers which are so tasty and the texture is fantastic. I'll always grow those. King Edwards, I love King Edwards, but if you don't get if you get blight early, they never make a reasonable size. So that's why I always grow now Sarpomira, as you've seen. They're not quite as tasty. But they are absolutely amazingly prolific and I would say 100% uh, blight resistant because I've just pulled some up in October that were still growing and like, as you saw, if you see the video, I've got an amazing crop. So uh, I'll go for Sarpos. So basically Nicola, Charlotte for me early, for me salad potatoes. King Edwards, I grow Kestrel for shows and I, I do also grow them to eat because they make a fantastic baker and they're really tasty potato for mashing and they've got really good slug resistance if you do grow them in the ground unlike me who grows them in pots but they're, apparently they've got really good slug resistance so that's about it for spuds i think there's that many you know everyone's got their own favorites tomatoes i'm pretty boring with tomatoes actually i just grow shirley which i just like the taste of for normal sized tomatoes and then what's the other one called gardener's delight for the cherry tomatoes I'm not a big fan of these really sweet cherry tomatoes because I just I prefer something with a bit of tang to it. So that's why I grow Gardener's Delight. They've got you know slightly tangy taste. I've grown different beefsteak ones with mixed success. Marmand, there's one called Marmand, which is a, a bush variety. So you've got to be careful and keep nipping them out, otherwise they just end up as a massive plant. And the thing with the bush variety is they all seem to come at the same time because they only grow up a certain height and then bush out and then all the trusses come at once. So you get a glut of beef tomatoes. And then uh, uh, um, that's it. I'm running out of ideas now. I'll give you another quick tip. If you look in a seed catalogue, generally the best sort of seeds are the ones that are called RHS AGM, which is where they've been tried and tested by the Royal Horticultural Society and given them the award of garden merit. So they test them for vigour, taste, flavour, versatility, you know, how well they grow everything. And if they're deemed good enough, then they will put a lot of them, they will, they will give them that sort of accolade of having our RHS AGM. And it's a lot of the ones I grow, the varieties, have actually got that because they are a fantastic variety. So that's about it, I think. I've probably missed some of the something really basic out, but I'm just uh, trying to go from memory and think what, what I do grow. 
So that's about it. They're the varieties I grow. Like I say, I don't grow a lot of things like cauliflowers, aubergines, asparagus. There's that many radishes I don't grow. But they're just the basic varieties I grow and the why I like them. So that's about it, folks, I think. See you later.